Hello class, this is a video tutorial on further trigonometric identities and equations. In this video we'll be looking at solving trig equations with the auxiliary angle method. So as we saw previously, we saw that the conversion of f of x equals a sine x plus b cos x, it can actually be converted to the form of f of x equals r times one of these four um, identities. This is called the auxiliary angle method. As well as graphing, it can also be used to solve equations of the form a sine x plus b cos x equals k, where k is some constant. So let's go straight into an example where this might be used. You can go ahead, pause the video, and give this a go yourself. So here we go. Let's move this down for now, just to give us ourselves some space. And let's continue from here. So in the previous video, we saw uh, the function that we had to convert into. So we were told, change this into one of these four identities. But now, since we're not being told, we need to try and figure out which one we should be using. So let's try and figure out which one, indeed, we should be using. Well, if you take a look, we, we can really only choose either sine or cos, but notice how if we had a negative sign, we want to make sure we have a negative sign of x somewhere. Okay, so just to clarify, so we're going to have r something, x plus or minus angle. So what we want to make sure of is that we have a minus sine x. That way it's copying this exactly. Well, in order to do that, hopefully you can see that this is a and this is b. Hopefully you can see that there's a minus sine a there. So we need it to become that minus sine a. To do that, we need cos a plus b. So the form we're going to pick is cos of x plus theta. Now let's take a look at what happens when we expand this. We get r outside of cos x cos theta minus, because we're following that method, see how if it's cos a plus b, we get a minus sine x. So negative sine x sine theta. Let's move this out of the way again. Let's expand this further. We get r cos x cos theta minus r sine x sine theta. And this is going to be equal to our original expression here on the left hand side. So it's going to become root 3 cos x minus sine x. So take a look, it is matching exactly as we want. So now the method is the same as before. We're going to let the coefficients r cos theta cos x, so in case you've missed it, r cos theta cos x, that is equal to the matching, so that is matching, so it is matching that root 3 cos x. As for sine, since it's already negative, we don't need to do the following. Take a look, so a mistake that may have happened for some is this. So we get r sine theta sine x is equal to negative 1 sine x. It may seem the case that we need to do that, but because it's already negative, it's just going to be the positive 1. Now remember, this that I'm showing you, you don't have to write out this way. You can skip straight into what I'm about to show you here. So you could skip 
straight into this step shown here. So we square both. Squaring this, we get 3. Squaring this, we get 1. Adding everything together and factoring out r squared. Oops. Equals adding the 2 together, we get 4. And from here, r is equal to positive 2. Resubstituting this back into our original um, uh, simultaneous equation. So we get 2 cos theta equals root 3 and 2 sine theta equals 1. Solving for both of these, we get theta is inverse cos of root 3 on 2. And this one, we get theta equals inverse sine of half. You can check our values for this. Let's check in, um, we can check both in degrees or radians, but because our domain is in degrees, let's just stick to degrees here. Inverse cos root three on, oops, root three on two, we get, oops, theta equals 30 in the first quadrant. Because it's positive, we also need the other solutions for it, which is 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. Sine, inverse sine of half is also 30 degrees, but just for consistency, sine of, sorry, inverse sine of half is also 100 n, sorry, 150 degrees in the second quadrant. But as you can see, we have one angle that is the same for both solutions. So in summary, we have r equaling 2 and theta equaling 30. Now that we have that, we can go back to our original form. So r is 2. So 2 cos of x plus 30 degrees is equal to 1. Now, where I got that 1 is, remember we worked, we worked everything so that all of this can become this expression, which we have done now. So this is now equal to 2 cos x plus 30 equals 1. And now we solve this as we normally would. Um, we divide both sides by 2. Cos x plus 30 equals half. x plus 30 equals inverse cos of half. Straight into our calculator for this. Inverse cos of half. So x plus 30 is equal to 60 degrees, but also um, since it's positive half, cos is also positive in the fourth quadrant, which is 360 minus the first quadrant equivalent. So that's going to be 300 degrees. And one last step, minusing 30 from both sides. x is equal to 30 degrees and 270 degrees. In case you missed what I did, I subtracted 30 from each of the solutions. So our final answers are x equals 30 degrees and x equals 270. So let's try the next example. You can go ahead and pause the video and try it yourself. And here we go. Now let's take a look at this. Which form do we need to pick? Well, in this one, we need a negative cosine. Okay, that's a little bit more difficult. Oh, actually, no, we can see it right there. There's a negative cosine, negative cosine. So to get a negative cosine, we need to pick the form 
sine a minus b because that will give us this expansion. Come on, there we go. If we were to expand this, we get r outside of sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. We have that minus cos there. So a and b are going to be x and theta. So substituting those, x and theta, x and theta. Move this out of the way. Expanding this. Minus r cos x sine theta is equal to this left hand side. Now, since you were so patient in getting to this point, I'm going to show you a shortcut that you can always apply here. r will always be the square roots of a squared plus b squared, where a and b, that's a and that's b. That is a guaranteed shortcut every single time. So uh, that's going to be 16 plus 9, which is 25. So r is oops, positive 5. That is a little trick you can do to get here a lot faster. So r is always going to be square root of a plus b. Always keep that in mind. It's a little shortcut you can take. So let's move that. And then from here, you can go straight into this step 5 sine because now remember we're matching uh, sine x with sine x and r cosine theta is matching with 4 so it's going to be 5 because that's what r is 5 cos theta equals 4 and for the other one it's going to be since this is matching with cos and cos r sine theta is matching with 3. But remember, r is found to be 5. Solving this, we get theta is equal to inverse of cos 4 over 5. And this one, inverse of sine 3 over 5. Let's answer these inverse cos 4 over 5 I'm getting 36 degrees 52 minutes to the nearest minute um, I'm just gonna double check so that I don't need to check the second quadrant and fourth quadrant I believe it's going to be in the first quadrant here so I'm not gonna check the fourth quadrant equivalent not just yet let's check what this answer is shift sign or inverse sign 3 over 5 and that's a match, 36 degrees, 52 minutes. So the form we're gonna pick now is going to be five sine x minus 36 degrees, 52 minutes. That's what we're doing here, equaling five. So this is now what we need to solve. Dividing both sides by 5 equals 1. x minus 36 degrees 52 minutes equals the inverse sine of 1. I believe that's going to be 90 and 2 90, I think. Just 90. Inverse sine of 1. Yes, it is 90 degrees. And that is, trying to go from memory, that is the only one that I can think of. And so to answer for x, we add 36 degrees, 52 minutes to both sides, which gives us the answer of x is equal to 126 degrees and 52 minutes. If we wanted to um, just solve to the nearest degree, x is equal to 127 degrees. 
and there we have it. So I hope you can see that the bulk of the work is converting this a sine x plus b cos x into this form and solving for r and theta and then we solve it as we normally would any other trig equation. So I hope to see you in the next video. Best of luck.